Hi, my name is Yubin and I'm a third year U of T student specializing in neuroscience with a minor in physiology. In other words, a classic U of T life science student. All the different judgments that you have about my program will depend on your school, your major, or whether or not you have access to Reddit. I just wanted to put as much of what I learned in my university experience so far because I feel like something like this would have helped me in first year as well. If you're watching this and you're thinking about going to U of T for LifeSci or you're currently attending for LifeSci, I'm assuming that you have or have had some worries and anxieties about the program. You're probably one of two types of people, maybe both. Person one, you probably excelled in high school. Maybe you did IB, AP courses, or was some sort of gifted student. You got into U of T LifeSci and now you're excited to attend the Harvard of the North. You probably know that people see U of T LifeSci as a hellhole, but you've assured yourself that you'll stay on top of everything and make sure you're different from the others. Person two, you probably got pretty good grades too. You got into U of T LifeSci after all, even though it's not that hard to get in. However, you have just finished reading a terrible post on the internet about how you will never achieve a 4.0 GPA at U of T. And if you do choose U of T LifeSci, you're either dumb or don't care about your future or you just want to die. I was actually in the exact same boat after grade 12 in first year and even half of second year. Now that I've gotten myself out of this negative mindset and my negative GPA, I was powered by opinions, emotions, and misinformation rather than facts and logic. I just wanted to share what I learned so far so that you don't have to feel worried or hopeless like a lot of people do. Here are nine things that all U of T life science students should know coming from a U of T life science student. Number one, it is possible to get a 4.0. I promise you that anyone at U of T who isn't salty about their marks right now will tell you that it is possible to get a 4.0 at U of T. It might take you a while to figure out how you learn the best and how you study the best to adjust to new living situations, professors, friends, etc. You will adapt and things will get better, even though it might not seem like it after your fifth C minus of the semester. My biggest issue was my ego. I had done IB, so I thought I had this advantage over people, which turned out to be completely false. I find that people who come into university thinking that they're special because they're smart have this kind of blown up overconfidence about themselves that comes back to bite them in the butt. Self-confidence is a really important thing to have, but you have to understand, and the sooner you understand this, the better, that university isn't about who came in with the most knowledge, it's about who is good at acquiring new knowledge. It's not something that somebody can teach you by telling you. You actually have to go out, take courses, try studying, try learning, develop your own study habits and figure out the ways that work best for you. For people who are going into med school, you need to figure this out about yourself before university starts or at least very early on in university. Your first year marks will have an impact on whether or not you're a competitive candidate or not. This really isn't meant to scare you off. It's just I want to tell you the truth. So you can do your own research, but really just figure out how to study as soon as possible. If you wanted to go to grad school, luckily grad schools don't really look at your first or second years. They look more at the trajectory of where your marks are going. So they look if you've improved from first year to second year to second year to third, third to fourth, etc. Then again, you should do your own research about which program you want to get into because all programs differ and some of them do look at the first year marks all the way to your fourth year and some of them just take the last three. All of this to say that yes, it is possible to get very good grades at U of T. It's not impossible. Teachers aren't out to get you if you have the correct mindset. And it's never too late to grow this kind of mindset as a student. So if you're already messing up and you've done your first year and second year, then you've got a chance. Number two, the system at U of T is not out to get you. It seems to me that a lot of students here at U of T believe that there's something about the system or something about the profs or the teaching method that sets most students up for failure. And I say most because people who aren't doing so well tend to think that there is something about other students who are able to ride the bell curve or are smarter or are luckier, so they aren't affected by this bad system. While it is true that the second term test following a super easy first term test might be a lot
lot more difficult because the prof made it that way. It's usually not because the prof actually wants you to do bad, it's because they have to standardize the assessments to what is expected of the curriculum that they're giving. I do agree that some of these standards might be a little bit higher or a little bit lower in different universities, but I definitely don't think that this standard is particularly impossible at U of T. Of course, I can only speak for the U of T downtown St. George campus because that's the only one I've ever attended, but I strongly believe that there is no reason to think that U of T is particularly impossible and that U of T life science is particularly harder than other life science programs at other universities. That being said, there are certain things that U of T can work on, such as accessibility services or mental health services. But the main point is that there is nobody out here to get you and your own academic success depends on your skill set and your motivation. Number three, sometimes you'll feel like you don't have a life. Sciences do tend to be a lot more rigorous than certain other subjects. And sometimes you will feel like you're missing out on life. I don't want to name names and programs, but I have observed in first year and second year that I, as a science student, do have to put a lot more hours into studying and schooling than my peers in other subjects do. This should be a pretty obvious point, and if it's not, then you'll find out pretty soon. You have to acknowledge that you have to willingly commit yourself to your studies as a science student, just because of the nature of the subject. You have to be learning and ready to learn basically all the time. Two labs and three midterms in one week will stress you out to the point where you break down. You're gonna see your friends going out every single night in first year, looking like they're having the time of their lives while you're stuck in your ugly dorm room studying for a term test that you're deathly afraid of. You're gonna worry that you'll never get the full university experience like they show it in the movies. If you really, really care about that kind of stuff, my best tip for you is to go ham, go to every single party that you can attend when you have the time. During frosh, Christmas break, summertime, like just, just go every single night until you get it out of your system because that's actually a real thing, speaking from experience. When it feels like you're the only one working while everyone else is out playing, just remember that you're bettering yourself and you're working towards a goal. Not to say that you're better or your friend with the social life is better. It just means that you have a different attitude about this whole life thing. Number four, you should quit science if you don't love it. Unless you're passionate about getting into med school and that's the reason why you're in science, there is really no reason for you to be stuck in a program that you hate, especially science. If you really just wanted a university degree in anything and you just stuck with science because that's what you were good at in high school and you're finally realizing that you actually hate spending time studying for science, then you should probably switch to something that's a little bit less time consuming. I personally got pretty lucky because I went into science not really knowing what the field entails in terms of job opportunities, but I ended up loving it anyway. It took me until the end of first year for me to realize that this was something that I really did enjoy learning. And even through second year, I had doubts about my passion. I just needed a little taste of an upper year neuroscience course for me to realize that this was something that I actually wanted to study for the rest of my life. My advice to you is to give yourself a lot of time Really think about things before coming to harsh conclusions and making bad decisions and push through hard times. I can speak for myself and for people who I know are passionate about their field of study that it takes a lot of time, a lot of patience and a lot of sacrifice for you to realize that you're truly passionate in a subject. Number five is a U of T specific point and it's that it's totally okay if you don't know what subject you want to major in yet. It doesn't really matter whether you're in first year or second year, or maybe even third year if you're lucky with your course selection. You don't really have to know like, oh, I want to study molecular biology or like human genetics or physiology or neuroscience. This is specific for U of T because first year life sci is general, so you get to kind of feel things out before actually choosing a major. I do know that some other schools like UBC has this option as well. Some people, aka my parents' friends, think that this might be a waste of time because you're wasting your time doing general sciences in first year when you should be specializing in a subject. 
But the reality is most other programs take you through these basic science courses like chemistry, molecular biology, biochemistry, etc. I highly doubt that U of T students will be at a disadvantage for specializing a year later. But of course there are pros and cons to this. So far for me, it has been very helpful because I've been able to pick up, change, drop majors that I thought I wanted and then I decided I didn't want it, etc. But do note that you have to be careful with your course selections if you want to be as flexible as this because you might not be able to graduate within four years. Number six, med school isn't everything. If you're really passionate about med school, then you can just skip this part. Doctors are incredibly respectable people who work their butts off to get to where they are now and I'm not trying to downplay any of that in any way. However, it is super important to distinguish your true desires and your ego or your self-esteem's desires or maybe your parents' desires. I wanted to become a doctor in first year. I wasn't really passionate about it, but then again, at the time, I wasn't really passionate about anything. I slowly and painfully came to the conclusion that med school isn't really something that I want to spend my life on, and the desire to become a doctor actually stemmed from my low self-esteem. I wanted validation from society, validation from my family, and worst of all, self-validation from becoming a doctor. It's pretty messed up but a part of me thought that I would never be able to fully admire myself unless I put myself through the most rigorous program that I could think of, neurosurgery. Obviously, I've gotten past this now because I can talk about it like this, but self-validation should not come from something like working a job that I think people admire. It should come from something that makes you happy about life and something that makes you glad that you found it. For me in academics, that was scientific research, especially neuroscience. It's such a common experience to be looked down upon by your fellow students because you're not studying for med school like they are. I do admire all my peers, all my classmates, all my friends who are studying for the MCAT right now, tirelessly working every single day to get into med school but I admire them just as much as I admire my friends and colleagues who are passionate about their studies and research. Number seven, not everybody hates each other, but most people will be competitive. You'll spend most of your first year with people that you met at Frosh, orientation, whatever, some sort of introductory event. You'll think that you're gonna be best friends forever and hopefully you do stay that way and you guys do stay friends forever. But reality is, for most people, this friend group doesn't really last that long because after second year, people's real personalities start to show past the fake smiles and hi, my name is. However, I wouldn't say that finding friends is particularly difficult at university if you're trying. There are so many ways to meet new people like events, conferences, like sports events, academic events, everything like that. And most people you'll meet are normal and friendly people. I will say, however, that it is pretty hard to find colleagues to work with without feeling competition. Except for the few people who end up becoming your closest friends, it's pretty hard to find people to work with and just to be classmates with without kind of feeling this pressure of competition. That being said, the competition that you might feel is probably because you don't really know any of these people that well and everybody is just perpetually stressed or worried or anxious and sensitive. So overall, the act of making friends in itself isn't hard at all if you don't expect them to just randomly appear in your life one day. Number eight, making connections and reaching out is as important as it is for business students. The title was a little bit of a stretch, but one thing that many science students miss is the importance of networking. During first year, I had more than enough time to go around networking and meeting new people in my field, but I just didn't because I didn't see the importance in doing it. Even when I did go to conferences and events, I was too scared to go talk to the researcher or the speaker 
Because I thought, you know, I was just a first year. Anything that I said to them would sound dumb and trivial. During second year, I reached out to some upper year students and talked to some support groups for undergraduate students looking for research. This helped me so much. I can't even stress it enough. I started to realize that professors and researchers who could potentially hire you in the future are normal people, although they're much smarter and more experienced than you are. If they keep seeing your face during office hours or at every single talk that they give, then chances are they'll remember you. If they don't, you can let them know in their email like, Hi, I'm this person, and I attended this and this and this is your event. I found this part of your research especially fascinating, and hire me. It's just super important for you to be growing your communication skills and your people skills by going to these events and networking and talking to people who are smarter than you, even though it might make you scared. Those skills aren't just important when you're trying to land your first volunteer research position, but it can also help you in the long run, like going into grad school, at grad school, working. It might be easier to lock yourself in a library and tell yourself that pure knowledge will get you through all of life, but that's really not the case. Reaching out to people and learning from real conversations is just as important. Number nine. Personal health is just as important as your grades. I hope you've heard this phrase millions of times because it's true. Your physical and mental health should be your number one priority, especially because you need it. You need your brain to be well-nourished and happy for you to keep using it and keep learning. It's perfectly fine to go to bed when you're super exhausted. You don't have to stay up all night and brag about it tomorrow with your friends. It's fine to miss lectures if you're really feeling unwell, as long as you don't make a habit out of it. Balancing a healthy lifestyle and school is one of the most difficult things in the world. It's as big of a challenge as it is to get good grades, and I would say it's just as respectable. It's not easy to push yourself and have that extra bit of motivation to get yourself up and go to the gym every day or push yourself to eat healthy when there are $2 fries available at the brown food truck every day. Becoming a mature adult also includes learning how to take care of yourself properly and you should definitely care a lot about yourself, your body, and your mental health. So that's the end of this video. I really hope that this helps you and that you feel a little bit less worried about university. You're gonna learn so much about yourself, learning and life. And I'm so excited for you because that's exactly what I went through and I'm going through now. If this video helped you in the very least, please leave a like or maybe even a comment. And you can subscribe if you wanna see more U of T related content. You can even dislike this video if you feel more anxious because of me in which case I'm sorry. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next week.